Richard P. Rummelt, Good Strategy Bad Strategy, The Difference and Why It Matters Welcome to the engaging summary of Richard P. Rummelt's groundbreaking book, Good Strategy Bad Strategy, The Difference and Why It Matters. In the fast-paced world of business and personal growth, having an effective strategy is crucial to success. This summary provides a concentrated dose of valuable insights that will help you differentiate between good and bad strategies, understand the key components of an effective strategy, and learn from real-life examples that demonstrate the power of well-planned strategies. Brace yourself for simple yet mind-opening concepts that will demystify complex notions and offer a clear roadmap to strategic mastery. Defining Real Strategy A strategy is not just a goal or a vision, it's a roadmap that comprises a series of thought-out steps that lead to the desired outcome. Goals, motivational slogans, and buzzwords don't make up a strategy, but could rather serve as starting points. A well-crafted strategy eliminates ambiguous jargon and incorporates a plan of action that leads to achieving the set objectives. A strategy is often confused with goals, visions, and motivational slogans. A major graphic arts company in 2005 stated its strategy as a 20% revenue increase and a similar profit margin. While these figures represent desirable results, they lack the formulated approach to reach them, that's where a strategy comes in. A strategy is distinct from goals because it's a cohesive collection of ideas and plans designed to achieve those very objectives. It's common for goals and visions to lay the foundation for a strategy, but it's vital to understand that a well-defined path is necessary to attain them. Take, for instance, a football coach who tells his team to win the next game. This statement alone won't give the players any information on how to achieve victory. The coach needs to provide a plan of action, a tangible strategy for success. Another trap people fall into is mistaking buzzwords and motivational slogans for real strategies. Such instances often involve convoluted language that lacks clarity. For example, a major retail bank claimed its fundamental strategy was customer-centric intermediation. At its core, this statement translates to taking deposits, lending them to others, and focusing on the customer, simply put, be a bank. In this case, a plan of action that separates this bank from others is noticeably absent, making it challenging to call it a genuine strategy. In conclusion, a precise, thought-through plan of action is the essence of a well-crafted strategy. Overemphasis on goals, slogans, and jargon only distracts from the real purpose, creating the steps that lead to achieving our objectives. The Kernel of Success a successful strategy has one indispensable element, the kernel. This kernel consists of three main components, diagnosis, guiding policy, and coherent actions. The diagnosis involves analyzing complex situations, while the guiding policy outlines an approach to address these situations. Lastly, coherent actions ensure that the policy remains effective. IBM's reinvention in 1993 and Ford's struggle after acquiring luxury brands highlight the importance of a well-crafted kernel in shaping strategic success. The kernel is a vital aspect of every successful strategy, and it consists of three key parts. To begin with, the diagnosis involves analyzing often complex situations and circumstances. Once this analysis is complete, a guiding policy outlines an approach for dealing with the identified issues. To understand the kernel in action, let's take a look at IBM in 1993. At that time, the company was in decline, and its strategy of selling complete computers was no longer effective. Many experts suggested that IBM should adapt by fragmenting its various departments. However, CEO Lou Gerstner saw things differently. His diagnosis led to a shift toward centralizing and integrating the company to become a new market leader in IT consulting. Consequently, IBM established a guiding policy that concentrated its resources on customer solutions. The final component of the kernel is the coherent actions, which ensure the guiding policy's effectiveness. These actions must be in harmony and not contradict one another. 
The Ford Motor Company's struggle after acquiring luxury brands offers an example of the consequences of incoherent actions. Ford aimed to exploit the prestige of Volvo, Jaguar, Land Rover, and Aston Martin while benefiting from economies of scale. This strategy involved consolidating the design and manufacturing processes across the brands. However, this new direction compromised each brand's distinct qualities, a critical aspect of their appeal. Volvo buyers weren't looking for a safer Jaguar, nor did Jaguar buyers seek a sportier Volvo. Ultimately, Ford's strategy faltered due to a lack of coherent actions. In conclusion, the kernel, diagnosis, guiding policy, and coherent actions, is the foundation of any successful strategy. Cases like IBM's transformation and Ford's misadventure emphasize the importance of crafting a strong kernel to achieve strategic victory. Embracing tough strategic choices. Making difficult strategic decisions is an essential part of success, even when it means letting go of some aspects of a business. Choosing a clear path and prioritizing goals can lead to greater achievements, as seen in the cases of Digital Equipment Corporation, DEC, and Intel. Strong leadership is crucial in overcoming potential opposition and sticking to the chosen path, ultimately contributing to the company's growth and success. In the world of strategy, sometimes it's a choice between two paths that holds the key to success. The reality is, we can't always have everything, and focusing on what's most important helps businesses thrive. It's about prioritizing goals and directing resources with laser-sharp focus, rather than spreading efforts thin and underperforming. Take, for instance, the case of Digital Equipment Corporation, DEC, in 1988. Struggling to compete with emerging PC rivals, DEC executives were torn between different strategies, none of which they could agree upon. With nobody willing to compromise or make difficult choices, DEC floundered, eventually being swallowed up by a competitor. But there are success stories, too. Intel provides a shining example of embracing the power of tough decisions. In the face of fierce competition, CEO Andy Grove steered the company away from its original focus and toward microprocessor production. This change was met with resistance, as employees were attached to the familiar ways of the past. Nonetheless, Grove held firm, and in doing so, reshaped Intel into a global powerhouse, becoming the world's largest semiconductor manufacturer by 1992. The lesson here is clear, strategies often require sacrifices and standing firm against opposition. Selecting a single course of action over another, while difficult, can yield remarkable results. Good leadership is instrumental in navigating these challenging decisions, pushing forward even when the road isn't easy, and ultimately maximizing the impact of a well-executed strategy. Gaining competitive leverage. To gain a competitive advantage, a company must create a strategy that allows them to anticipate opportunities before competitors can react. By identifying the market's central pivot point, the best way to succeed in a given field, a company can tailor its approach to exploit emerging possibilities. Examples of companies executing this method include Toyota and 7-Eleven in Japan, each leveraging their unique insights and focusing on a specific pivot point to outperform rivals in their respective markets. Companies seeking a competitive advantage need a strategic approach that provides leverage over their rivals. The key is anticipating opportunities and acting on them before competitors can react. It's not about predicting the future, it's about understanding the present landscape and identifying emerging possibilities. Toyota exemplifies leveraging strategy effectively. While profiting from SUV sales, the company invested over $1 billion in developing hybrid electric gasoline technologies. The insight behind this decision was that the decreasing fossil fuel supply would eventually lead to higher demand for hybrids. As pioneers of hybrid technology, Toyota became the go-to option for manufacturers looking to license their hybrid system instead of investing in their own research and development, thus gaining significant leverage. To anticipate and capitalize on opportunities, a company must first pinpoint its market central pivot point which refers to the most effective way to succeed in that particular field. 
In Japan, 7-Eleven's convenience store chain identified this pivot point by recognizing that their customers grew bored of the same soft drink offerings. They realized variety was the key to satisfying the Japanese market and tailored their strategy accordingly. Although the average Japanese 7-Eleven store could only stock 50 varieties of soft drinks out of over 200 brands available, the company devised a system to maximize variety. By researching and recording local tastes, each store could offer a range of brands tailored to those preferences. As a result, 7-Eleven was able to sell a vast array of soft drinks, differentiating themselves from competitors and catering to local tastes effectively. Identifying and focusing on the central pivot point in a given market is crucial for gaining leverage over competitors. By acting on these insights, companies like Toyota and 7-Eleven can outperform rivals in their respective industries. Maximizing resources strategically. A successful strategy requires taking into account one's current situation and resource limitations while crafting a coherent plan. Hannibal's victory at the Battle of Cannae demonstrates how a well-structured strategy can lead to remarkable outcomes even when facing typically insurmountable challenges. To create a robust plan, one must wisely balance resources, potential actions, and optimization to achieve the desired goal. In devising a strategy for your business, it is crucial to assess whether your resources align with your present situation and maximize your advantage. A prime example of resourceful strategic planning is Hannibal's military tactics during the Battle of Cannae in 216 BC. Despite being outnumbered by the Roman army, his ability to develop a strategy based on his limited resources and circumstances led to a significant victory. Hannibal formed his troops into a tactical formation designed to deceive the Romans, resulting in a crushing defeat for a vastly larger force. This tale teaches us the importance of carefully formulating actions within a strategy so that they naturally progress from one step to the next. To replicate the success of strategies like Hannibal's, acknowledge the trade-offs between resources and potential actions, enabling you to optimize both effectively. Strive to create a plan that utilizes your available resources to their highest potential, ensuring success even when faced with seemingly overwhelming challenges. Seizing Hidden Business Opportunities The ever-evolving business landscape offers numerous opportunities for those willing to explore less obvious second-order effects. Often, the most significant impacts of change may not provide a clear advantage, but these second-order effects could yield surprising benefits. For instance, the emergence of television led to major Hollywood studios financing independent films to counter the revenue loss from a dwindling captive audience. Additionally, in markets where changes are scarce, innovation can drive growth. Companies like Kodak and Fuji rose to prominence by developing color film when black and white photo technology reached its peak, thus bringing about a market shift. In the dynamic world of business, recognizing and capitalizing on hidden prospects can be the key to success. Instead of focusing solely on primary effects, examine the second-order effects that arise alongside them. These concealed opportunities often hold untapped potential. Consider the impact of television on the entertainment industry. While the competition between free TV and movie theaters was an evident consequence, the aftereffects were more nuanced. Hollywood studios, facing a vanishing audience, turned to finance independent films attracting niche crowds. As a result, Indie directors and writers benefited from the support of major studios and thrived amidst the ripple effect of television's introduction. In markets where technological advancements are limited by cost constraints, innovation can pave the way for change. The photographic film industry is a prime example. Established giants like Ilford and Ansco dominated the black and white film market, making it difficult for newcomers to challenge them. However, Smaller companies like Kodak and Fuji found a different path, they focused on the unexplored realm of color film. By developing and improving this technology, they instigated a market shift and climbed to the top. To succeed in an ever-changing business world, it's essential to look beyond the apparent and delve into the hidden opportunities. By observing less discernible second-order effects and pursuing groundbreaking innovation, companies can unlock their full potential and prosper. Strategize like a scientist. 
becoming an effective strategist begins with forming strategic hypotheses. These educated guesses help envision potential scenarios and guide your strategy. Take inspiration from Howard Schultz, who, after visiting Italy in 1983, hypothesized that the Italian espresso experience could be recreated in America. He tested this idea, modifying it to cater to local preferences, ultimately leading to the global success of Starbucks. Like Schultz, you too should test your hypotheses, gather new information, and refine your strategy. The art of strategizing can be likened to a science where constant refinement is key to success. Evading the inside view trap. You are five times more likely to encounter a car accident while using your cell phone, a risk equal to driving under the influence. Many realize this reality but convince themselves they're exceptional drivers, immune to such outcomes. This is the inside view, the dangerous inclination to consider our situations unique, disregarding others' experiences in similar circumstances. Reflecting upon the 2008 financial crisis, this mindset convinced people that past economic collapses were irrelevant to the United States, ultimately contributing to the devastating financial crisis. To dodge this perilous thought pattern, adopting an outside view is critical. Successful strategies inquire why others in parallel situations thrive or fail, understanding that our circumstances are rarely as distinctive as we believe. The financial crisis could have been averted had decision makers applied an outside view and acknowledged that crises are recurring phenomena. Likewise, countless accidents could be prevented if individuals contemplated the data with an external perspective. Embracing lessons from others' experiences fortifies a robust strategy. As we wrap up our insightful journey through good strategy bad strategy, let's reiterate some key takeaways. A good strategy is not just a goal or a slogan, it must include a clear plan of action, called the kernel, which consists of the diagnosis, the guiding policy, and coherent actions. We must make tough choices and prioritize resources to create an effective strategy. It's crucial to consider factors like leverage, the impact of second-order effects, and innovative approaches to create change. Like a diligent scientist, develop and refine hypotheses based on real-life observations and lessons learned. Finally, remember to prioritize the outside view and learn from the experiences of others. Armed with these valuable insights, you can confidently embark on your journey to creating winning strategies that will set you apart from the competition.